So hi guys, this is Wobbo Oki and today we are going to go around what you call slightly upscale district called Bermondsey. And so guys, Bermondsey used to be um, known for its um, popular leather market industry or leather working industry and it's actually tanned leathers back in the middle ages. So basically we are going to go around today Bermondsey and see all the um, special features and special also first of the spots so guys further centuries later all the um, warehouses were built around the Bermondsey because the docking industry began they built all lots and lots and lots of warehouses all over the um, Bermondsey to sell the um, industry so but recent development they actually turned all the warehouses into complex full lots and so stand by we shall give you further detailed information on Bermondsey during the Industrial Revolution, Bermondsey became a center for manufacturing, particularly in relation to tanning. More recently, it has experienced regeneration, including the warehouse conversions to flats and the provision of a new transport links. Bermondsey was a center for the leather working in the Middle Ages and was granted a virtual monopoly of the trade in 1703. A typical district of the London Docklands, it was built up into an industrial and warehousing area in the 18th and 19th centuries. After suffering a large-scale destruction in the aerial bombings of World War II, it underwent residential and commercial redevelopment in the latter half of the 20th century. Is Bermondsey worth a visit? Bermondsey is one of the coolest neighborhoods in London. Bermondsey's food scene is impeccable, and there are several top notch art galleries on Bermondsey Street. Well worth a visit. A day out in this area is one of my favorite ways to spend a Saturday, so here's my guide to the best things to do in Bermondsey. And so guys, this is the Bermondsey Antique London Market. It used to be London Antique Market and it has actually... I'm not sure when the date is actually set up for the market, but today is Saturday and it's the 13th of January 2024 and weather is murky and it's about 4 degrees Celsius in London. So we're at the London Antique Market, which is also where Bermondsey Square and actually this Antique Market used to be back in Islington and they moved down here due to redevelopment of Islington in 1950. So basically because I don't know when the market actually is here. So if I find out I shall put the description below for you to actually learn. So basically guys this place, Bermondsey itself, has gone a regeneration in recent times and those are the young complex floods and standby and I shall give you further detail on Bermondsey Square. Oh yes. This historic London antique market has a wide range of antiques and it is the perfect place to make wondrous discoveries. Traders sell everything from cutlery to furniture and china to jewelry and the unexpected. A treat to explore, the antique market is popular with antique traders, tourists and bargain hunters alike. You will find great expertise amongst the antique traders, many of whom have been coming to Bermondsey Square for years. History the 15th century English Queen consort of Edward IV, who is Elizabeth Woodwell, lived her last five years in Bermondsey Abbey during in 1492. 
Caledonian Market, which used to be in Islington, moved to its current location, which is the uh, Bourbon's Antiques Market, in 1950 after the old Caledonian Market site was designated for redevelopment in the, in the late 1940s. Bermondsey Abbey, which is the uh, Bermondsey Square, was an English Benedictine monastery, most widely known as being founded in the 11th century. It had a precursor mentioned in the early 8th century and was centered on the, what is now Bermondsey Square, the site of Bermondsey Market and Bermondsey. So guys, our first counter is a Maltby Street. We are in the Maltby Street, and we're gonna go to the go to the roadworks where there's an alleyway for a food market. It only opens on weekends, which is Saturday and Sunday. And the reason why we're gonna explore that is because that thing's been open since 2010 due to um, some traders from Borough Market decided to actually leave the Borough Market due to some discord with the authorities and trade at the Emerald Walks alleyway food market. So at the time when they actually began the uh, Rockwell food market, a coffee company began the trading and they took all the and they actually took the same example the more traders began actually to trade there. So stand by and I'll give you detailed information on Rock Rock Alleyway Malby Street Market. Malby Street Market opened in 2010. This unlikely southeast London backwater quickly became a popular weekend foodie destination. Malby Street Market developed from a group of borough market traders who had opened storage facilities in railway arches around Malby Street about a mile from the market. In 2009, Mammoth Coffee Company started to open their arch to sell coffee on Saturdays and other traders followed the example. In 2011, seven traders were evicted from the borough market for trading at the competing venue. In turn, the traders criticized poor facilities at the market and uh, moved to selling takeaway food. Initially, nine traders moved a mile from Barra High Street to Malpe Street. The market has changed and developed since then and now includes up to 30 traders at any one time with a steady cycle of new traders coming and going as decided by the uh, constituted market authorities. Basically, guys, after the narration, I shall take you through the um, this road walk alleyway and just look at things to see things live view. Right, yes. And so, guys, we're at the um, road walk alleyway street food market called Malpe Street, Malpe Street Market. Basically, that's all it is. As you can see, there's lots and lots of stools selling, selling good stuff. And we are early in the morning, somewhere in 11 a.m and the place is not so so busy yet if we actually move down like 2 p.m we'll be a bustling crowd and that's what it is so basically guys the whole alleyway is about approximately 200 yards long it's not very very long you probably cross it about give and take about a couple of minutes walk if you're actually walking at good pace and this place is just for wandering and having fun basically and lots and lots of food to taste. You also got retailers on the other side of the uh, wall where the arches are. So this part of the uh, alleyway, guys, is more busy. Uh, as you can see, lots and lots of uh, huts uh, doing their stuff. And already a lot, a lot of people are actually wandering about, which is a good thing. So guys, we're actually exiting the road walk. Multi street food, uh, street food market now, and this is the uh, exit, and this is the uh, outside. What it looks like. So basically, we're at the uh, main entrance again, and doing this uh, static shot. As you can see, people are coming in, started coming in for for lots and lots of um, food to look at. Oh yes. See you in my next static shot. So basically, guys, this is the uh, main entrance of the road walk. Food, uh, street food market there, as you can see the robot is up there and it's always there. 
So basically, guys, we'll just exit the um, street food uh, market, which is the uh, walks alleyway, and this is the uh, actual multi street itself with all the, all the uh, arches being actually converted into a retail center. So guys, as we're actually heading towards the Tanai Street, this is the uh, Malpi Street is still. I'm uh, just gonna let you know this. As you can see, no cars can pass from here, and you've got lots and lots of benches for sitting and relaxing. So hi guys, there we have actually just come off the um, Malpi Street Market, and we're on the Tanai Street. It's in Bermondsey, and uh, basically Tanai Street hasn't got much to do with anything um, special. Anything interesting, much of the interest. So, however, we're gonna move on to the Yamada um, Market Street and tell you all about background industry uh, and tell you all about its background history, which is so so intriguing. So, stand by and let's go to the um, Leather Market Street. Basically, right, guys, this is the uh, Tanai Street. So, guys, before we actually move into the um, Leather Street Market, this is the Bermondsey Street. And it is the heart of the uh, Bermondsey for active living. So, this part of the Bermondsey street, guys, is not so so um, active, but it's still um, there's some retailers and things to do. However, it's not as vibrant as the other side that I will show you. So, we are facing the other side of the uh, Bermondsey street now, guys, and just more and more, a bit more vibrant and a bit more activity going on here, and lots of lots of shops and restaurants and takeaways and we shall come back to the Bermondsey Street after we do the Leather Street Market guys so bear with me and so we're at the um, Leather Street Market guys right now as I'm panning to the left hand side as you can see as I mentioned earlier on it is full of warehouses it used to be actually working for the um, London Docklands back in the um, uh, London Docklands industry it was, uh, was at the very very at the um, high point and these were all warehouses, they've been converted recently to complex flats and shops and many other things. So uh, basically guys, there's a lots of, lots of uh, historic buildings and one of the oldest one is the um, leather market itself and where most of the uh, buildings has been actually used and buildings has been actually converted to uh, flats as they were warehouses and also into a um, business space. So that is the uh, leather street market here and standby shall give you detailed information. Adios. A workspace, we have a plethora of historic buildings that have been lovingly restored for use as business space. One of the oldest being the Leather Market, situated less than a 10 minute walk between Borough and London Bridge. It's now home to a diverse array of startups and established businesses with a strong communities in the consulting, architectural, technology, and design industries. Because actually there's also the um, leather market gardens here. We're actually panning to the right hand side. This is the part of it. And it's a pleasant park. It's very small next to the um, school, which is called Snowfields School. If you live in the area, you probably know the Snowfields School there as a primary and nursery together. So here we are, more closer to the uh, street, guys. As you can see, there's lots and lots and lots of facilities, lots and lots of uh, fun to have if you are living in Sadak Bora, basically. So the uh, Bermondsey is in Sadak Bora, so Bermondsey is a district. So basically, uh, Bermondsey, three features of Bermondsey, guys. One of them is the yeah, Malpe Street, street food market. The other one is Vinegar Yard and and Bermondsey Street basically as we are filming it right now As you can see, guys, there's a plethora of shops and retailers and all the good goodies and small corner shops belonging to a nostalgic times of life in London.
And so, guys, this is Burma District. It's a rare finding, a street in London that has been everything you want to for a sport of indulging and sightseeing, but Burma District is one of those places. When I'm making a last minute plans with friends and we are not sure where to meet, we'll often settle on Burma Street. Only a five minute walk from London Bridge, it's well connected, making it an ideal meeting point among friends each living in the different corners of London. I should also mention it's a quick walk from Bar Market too, so combining London's best food market with Bermondsey Street is a tasty way to spend a morning or afternoon. If the objective of the day begins and ends with food, rest assured your mission will be completed. The Fashion and Textile Museum is the only museum in UK contemporary fashion and textile design. It was founded in 2003 by Dame Sandra Rhodes. So my guys there, they were the vinegar yard and it used to be a wine yard back in 17th century guys and it is good for food, drink and if you enjoy the theme market and that's what it's for. So without further ado, let's go explore this place ourselves. So I also see inside. Vinegar Yard was built in early 17th century and had originally been a wine garden yard or the wine yard or covent garden. Not surprisingly, given its proximity to the theatre, its population had colourful, not to say roughish, elements. Located right next to London Bridge Station, Vinegar Yard is an electric mix of drinks, food, a flea market and arts. In summer, socialize in the sun in our huge outside venue. In the winter, we go undercover with huge tents and some outdoor heating or book a table in one of our two indoor bars. Alongside our extensive drinks menu, our food traders offer a great choice for every taste daily. The infamous flea market operates on weekends and art from Joe Rush can be seen throughout the venue. There's a great selection of spaces including our terraces and Abigail's speaker easy bar. We reserve a small number of tables, but there's no need to book, just pop in there and see us. If you're a larger group or have any special requests, get in touch. The church of this dedication is first recorded on the site in 1290, serving lay workers at the Bermondsey Abbey. The design of that building is not known, but in 1680 the church was demolished and rebuilt again, retaining the 15th century late medieval tower with a gothic window and arches. So, hi there guys, this is Bombo Aoki and we come to the end of this video guys I hope you enjoyed the video and don't forget to subscribe share like comment and click the notification bell icon for more upcoming videos so see you in my next video adios peace